Will the diesel engine disappear? In this video, we are going to cover the following topics. In 1987, in cooperation with Maschine and Fabrik Ausberg Nuremberg, or now as MAN, Rudolf Diesel built the first working prototype of a combustion engine to be run on inexpensive heavy fuel oil. Later in 1923, the first diesel truck was presented with a weight of 5 tons powered by a 4-cylinder OB2 diesel engine producing 45 horsepower at 1000 rpm. Much development and improvement of the diesel engine has taken place since then and today 97% of heavy-duty commercial trucks are diesel powered. But with society and government's constant search to demonize the emitters of CO2, manufacturers and companies are forced to look for new ways to reduce their emissions, to avoid bad reputation, taxes and fines. The European Union struck a deal in October 2022 on a law to effectively ban the sale of new petrol and diesel cars from 2035, aiming to speed up the switch to electric vehicles and combat climate change. Also, the state of Washington has announced they are banning sales of petrol and diesel cars by 2030. This makes you ask yourself the question, what about semi-trucks? How does the future look like from them and will the diesel truck engine disappear? Let's take a look at it. How dirty is a diesel engine really? Over the last 20 years, emissions from new heavy-duty diesel trucks were reduced by 95% for nitrogen oxides, or NOx, an ozone precursor, and 90% for particulate emissions. Today's trucks are so low in emissions that it would take 60 new trucks to generate the same emissions as a single truck manufactured in 1988. This is due to things like AdBlue, after-treatment systems, optimized fuel and injection systems, and much more, but more on that later. Also, most diesel engines today can run on HVO diesel, which produces up to 90% reduction in CO2 emissions compared to a standard diesel engine. Hydro-treated vegetable oil, or HVO, can be made, for example, from waste oil and rapeseed oil and is used to create high-quality bio-based diesel fuels which does not get enough attention at all. The Diesel Engine's Constant Improvements Almost each year, governments around the world set new standards for emission reduction and fuel efficiency on diesel engines, which make greater and greater demands on the trucks and their systems. In order for the engine manufacturers to meet the overly strict emission standard, several components and control systems must be installed, such as variable geometry turbocharger, diesel oxidation catalyst, diesel particulate filter, exhaust gas recirculation, selective catalytic reduction, multiple sensors, and an engine computer module. All to control everything and provide onboard diagnostics. This technology is designed to reduce diesel emissions and improve overall efficiency, but is also a costly affair not just to develop but also to maintain, as the chance of various electrical errors increases considerably. The massive attention on alternative fuels means that manufacturers lose focus on improving the diesel engine, which still has a lot of untapped potential. There are several technologies and processes that are not fully exploited, such as waste heat recovery, variable valve actuation strategies, management of cooling circuit, improvement of external after-treatment devices, and much more, which not only will help on fuel efficiency, but also reduced total cost of ownership. Are electric trucks non-polluting? They say we all have to change to electric trucks and cars to save the world. But how much does an electric truck pollute? At first glance, you might think, well, it runs on electricity, so the answer is zero. But that's just not how it is. First of all, it requires a lot of resources to produce an electric truck. Electric cars have an estimated twice as large climate footprint as fossil-powered cars even before the car leaves the factory, because the battery requires a large amount of energy to manufacture. In addition, there is a climate footprint associated when the vehicle is worn out and has to be broken down and parts recycled. Lithium batteries are not easy to break down or recycle and is also a costly process. 
However, so much research is being done in this field that it can certainly be optimized in the near future, and then the math looks different. But how many miles does an electric car have to drive before it breaks even on pollution compared to a regular car? It takes so much extra energy to produce a Tesla 3 that it must drive between 41,000 miles and 94,000 miles before it emitted less CO2 than a comparable gasoline vehicle. But also, here there is a big difference in where the electricity you charge your car with comes from. 23% of all electricity from the United States comes from coal-fired plants, which is not CO2 friendly and therefore also affects the calculation. The difference in the production of a semi-truck is probably even greater and, therefore, the electric trucks must drive considerably more miles before it breaks even. Electric as a fuel Is electric a good choice to power a heavy-duty truck? Let's take a look at the Tesla Semi. Tesla announced the production of an electric semi-truck back in 2017, and production is now running, with deliveries of the first trucks in December 2022. The Tesla semi-truck has four independent motors providing maximum power and acceleration. The four motors provide a driving range of 300 to 500 miles and will be able to charge to 70% in 30 minutes, fully loaded at 82,000 pounds gross weight. Tesla claims you will be able to save more than $200,000 in fuel savings over three years. It does sound appealing, but again, it requires sufficient chargers so that there is not too far between the charging stands and that there is enough of them, so you don't have to stand in line for hours. Also, 300 to 500 miles is not enough for many truckers, and is this estimate, we wonder if they have included changing weather and elevations in the terrain, as well as the wear and tear on the batteries over time. There are other providers of electric semi-trucks in the heavy-duty segment, all with solutions coming in the near future, but all with similar power outputs and properties. It does seem a bit more promising in the light and medium-duty trucks where more solutions are available and the daily miles is way lower, where the electric solutions might be a better fit. Hydrogen as fuel Swedish truck manufacturer Volvo Trucks has unveiled a hydrogen fuel cell truck, which the company claims will have a range of up to 1,000 kilometers and a refueling time of less than 15 minutes. Daimler Trucks, who owns Mercedes-Benz, Western Star, Freightliner, and Fuso are also developing a liquid hydrogen engine, also with a range of up to 1,000 kilometers. However, there is a downside of the hydrogen solution, as more than 95% of the hydrogen being produced today is derived from unabated fossil fuels, so hydrogen vehicles cannot be considered zero emissions. Hydrogen filling stations require H2 to be trucked in on diesel-powered tankers, an expensive and highly polluting method of transporting a gas. Existing hydrogen filling pumps in places like California are notoriously unreliable, often breaking down or running out of gas, hydrogen storage is inefficient, energetically, and has poor weight utilization. This solution is nowhere close to being a substitute for diesel, but it is exciting to follow the development of this exciting fuel source in the future. CNG as fuel CNG engines work much like gasoline-powered vehicles with internal combustion engines. Many heavy-duty natural gas vehicles use spark-ignited natural gas systems, but some systems use a diesel-like compression injection. CNG is natural gas, or biogas, compressed to a high pressure and stored in tanks in the truck. Most CNG trucks have a range of 500 to 550 miles and reduce the CO2 emissions by 20%. However, testing have shown that CNG vehicles can admit large amounts of ammonia, which contributes to particle pollution. Also, the refueling time is significantly longer, and the refueling places are few, as well as service intervals are shorter. There is a serious lack of facilities equipped to repair CNG truck, which requires special equipment as well as fire department requirements and modifications which can range between $50,000 to $150,000. Will the diesel engine disappear? The answer is… no one knows. New technologies are constantly being discovered, and before the sale of diesel trucks is banned, a new fuel may have emerged that is much more CO2 friendly and is even more effective than diesel. 
Or maybe the diesel engine will be improved so much that electricity just can't beat it, and that we will once again accept a diesel engine. So I guess we just have to wait and see what the future will bring. We believe that several decades will pass before the technologies and the infrastructure is ready for another type of fuel, whether it be electricity, gas, hydrogen, or some form of hybrid. What is your opinion? Should the diesel engine be replaced by another fuel type? Share your opinion below in the comment field.